All right, eighth grade, we've talked about functions. We've talked about graphing on the coordinate plane. Now we're going to talk about identifying linear functions, what they are and how we can recognize them. And hopefully you can maybe put some of your context clues or some of your uh, vocabulary knowledge to, to work and realize that linear functions are like normal functions, except they're always in a straight line. So um, linear functions kind of put the fun in functions. And that's the worst joke I'll tell during this video. But here we go. I uh, hope you have your name and title. And before we get started, I just, you don't have to copy this down, but I just want to show you that linear functions can kind of model a lot of real world examples or uh, similar to real world examples. So let's pretend that I always go or I go to the baseball card shop. And whenever I do, I can buy or sell packages. The packages would have to be my best cards but or some good cards, but I can buy or sell packages for $5 each. So that's $5 per package. Of baseball cards. And let's also pretend that whenever I go there, you know, I'm looking at the baseball cards, thinking the smell of the grass, crack of the bat, hot summer day, St. Louis baseball. So I always have to get something that takes me back, which is a package of Big League Chew. But I only get one each time. So Big League Chew. So if you haven't had it before, it's a awesome, awesome baseball bubble gum. Now, we can probably figure out, I could tell you, I'm not going to tell you how many packages because it always depends, you know, how much money I got on me and how I'm feeling, how crazy. Um, but I always buy or sell packages for $5, and I always get a package of Big League Chew no matter what, just one package. How can you figure out the total cost or the amount that I will spend there? Well, hopefully you'll see that it's five times the number of packages I buy, and then we're just going to add two to that. We're just going to add two every time. And it's not, there's no variable with the two because I'm only spending two dollars once. Whereas if I buy multiple packages, we need to multiply that number of packages times the five dollars each one costs. So you can figure out that, hey, let's say you buy three packages. How much is that going to cost you? Well, three times five would be fifteen, plus the two dollars I spent on Big League Chew, that trip would cost me seventeen dollars. Let's say I don't buy any, zero packages. Well, I'd still have to pay $2 because I got that big league chew. I was in there and I just couldn't help myself. What if I sell five packages? Well, what's going to happen then? Well, I'm going to make $25. So if I sell five, I'd make $25. And then I'd have to spend two of it. So I'd actually make 23. How much did it cost me? It cost me negative 23. It didn't cost me anything. I actually made money. That's why it's a negative amount of money right there. And so the idea here is that what we're seeing is that there's a constant uh, or a consistent relationship. And that's what we're going to talk about is this right here. The fact that um, every time I buy one more package, the cost increases the same amount. So that's what we're seeing is... Uh, the usefulness of linear equations. I have some notes for you as always, so we're going to run through them real quick. A linear function relates two variables that have a constant rate of change. And that $5 price tag on those packages of baseball cards was that constant rate of change. It was changing by $5 every time I increased the number of packages by one. Number one is they create a straight, non-vertical line when we graph them. So we're going to graph a lot of linear functions. And if you're graphing a function, you don't know if it's linear. If it's a non-vertical line, remember we said non-vertical lines aren't functions. If it's a straight line and it's not vertical, then we got a, we got a linear equation or a linear function. Two, the change in y is equal for equivalent change in x. So if you increase x by 3 and increase by x by 3 again, then your y should change the same amount each time. That's that constant rate of change. And finally, they have a non-denominator x term with no exponent when written with y equals. So whenever you see an a linear function or a relationship written as y equals, if the x has no exponent and it's not in a denominator, you can just tell right away, hey, I got a linear function, which is great. x is the independent variable, y or f of x is the dependent variable, x, y chart tell us graph, that's review, so let's get to work. Number one, determine if the following is a linear function by graphing. So we know that we can graph pretty easily by using an x, y chart. In this case, I like to do uh, this is going to be a good one to just use these five independent variables or inputs. Negative 2, when I plug in negative 2, I get negative 4. Minus 7 is negative 11. Negative 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Minus 7 is negative 9. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. 1 times 2 is 2. Minus 7 is negative 5. 
and 2 times 2 is 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Now I'm not going to graph that first one because I want to leave our I want to leave our chart just with a scale of 1. So we'll cross this one out. It, it would be useful, but we only really need two points to determine a line. So negative 1, negative 9 would be way down here. Remember we run, then we rise. 0, we're running 0, and we're just going to drop negative 7 for our y. would be down here. 1, negative 5 would be right here. 2, negative 3, we're going to drop here. Now, if we connect our dots, we see, hopefully you're drawing straighter than I am, but you're going to see that this is a line. We do have a linear function. It's not vertical and it is a straight line. Also, we have this constant rate of change. It's increasing by 2 each time. We're just adding 2 every time we increase x by 1. So for every same change in x added increasing by 1, our y is increasing by the same amount. So we got a linear function here. So I should put yes in big capital letters. Yes, hooray, linear function. Next one, let's see what we get. Uh, next one is going to look a little different. They're going to ask us, determine if the following is a function. Now this one they didn't give us a graph, or I didn't put a graph up here. So I just want to show you that before you even graph it, you can use your xy chart and say that for this, our x increases by 1 between all of these. And so if this is a linear function, then as our x increases the same amount, our y should increase the same amount. So if the answer is, is the y increasing the same amount, if it increases the same amount each time, then that's a constant rate of change. This is adding 5. Let's see what about the next one. This added 5 as well. So did this. Okay, we see that for every change in x, we're increasing by Five. So this is a linear function as well. Another one. So you didn't even have to graph it. If you can see that the rate of change is the same, that y change is the same for every single x you increase, then we're good. Finally, determine if the following is a function. So if you paid attention to those notes, you might be able to look at this and say, well, it says y equals, but you said that x couldn't be in the denominator. And you're right. This is not going to be a linear function not a linear function, because x is in the denominator. And if we have y equals, then x can't be in the denominator, can't have an exponent. But let's see why. Let's use an xy chart. Let's see why. Ha, ha, ha. Let's see what this actually looks like when we plug in some numbers. So how about um, negative 1. Oh, shoot. Let's do negative 6. So negative 6, negative 1, 0, 1, and 6. And graph this with me, and we'll see what it looks like. If 3 is divided by negative 6, you can simplify that. 3 sixths is 1 half, but the negative denominator means it's going to be a negative 1 half. If you have negative 1 half minus 7, add up so negative 1 half plus negative 7, negative 7 and a half. Okay. What about negative 1? Negative 1, 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. 0. 3 divided by 0. Oh, goodness. That's undefined. We can't graph that. We can't ever divide by 0. Bad things happen. What about 1? 3 over 1 is 3. 3 minus 7 is 4. And 6. 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. 1 half minus 7, add ups, 1 half plus negative 7 is negative 6 and a half. So let's try and graph this real quick. If we have negative 6, we'll go 5 to the right, 6 to the, 5 to the left, 6 to the left, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a half. So we get one point down here. Okay, that's negative 6, negative 7 and a half. What about negative 1, negative 10 would be all the way down. Ah! It'd be all the way, way down here. And even a little lower. 0 and defined, we can't graph that. 1, 4 is up here. And then we have 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Gosh, I am in the way, aren't I? 
Then we're going to have 6, negative 6 and a half. So we'll go 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. That's negative 5, 6 and a half. So something crazy has happened here. What? And we can tell, you can tell that if you try and connect these dots, it sure isn't going to be a line. What it's actually going to look like is this. And you'll do limits of these things and talk about, have you seen Mean, mean Girls? The limit does not exist. Uh, this would be one where the limit does not exist, I think, if my memory serves. But this is looking crazy, and it's not a linear function. So you can tell that for sure. This is why those denominators are so crazy, because as we get close to zero as the value of that denominator with our x changing, uh, things just get wild, because it's undefined. I'm going to leave you with a couple to work on on your own. Nothing that crazy. You don't have to graph them. You'll be able to tell next time that if y equals and then you have x in the denominator, just tell me. Not a function. Not a linear function. Number one says y equals 4x minus 2. Do that one by graphing. For number two, y equals 9x to the third power minus 32. You can just um, write that and tell me whether it's a function or not, a linear function or not, and why. And for number three, I give you uh, an xy chart. So just look at that. Maybe look at the rate of change would help and tell me if that one's a function too. And I will see you later.